everybody and good evening. Welcome to the Tessa Marie Show. My name is Tessa Marie and tonight I'm bringing you some wonderful and amazing inspiration and ideas and information on the five pillars of prosperity. As you know, the five pillars of prosperity are the five ways and five things that you need to live a fulfilled life. So tonight, while I'm standing here looking at you, I'm thinking of the five pillars of prosperity and how powerful they are. The five pillars of prosperity, if you haven't come across them before, are mental prosperity, emotional, physical, spiritual, and financial prosperity. These five pillars represent five things that you must have at the top prosperous in is your mental prosperity, your emotional prosperity, physical, spiritual, and financial prosperity. The reason I call them prosperity is because they need to be high, they need to be prosperous, and anything you have that you're prosperous in is usually good. So what we're looking at is making sure your five pillars are always tip-top shape, firing at all five cylinders, all of them working together as a team to give you that wonderful and amazing life that you desire. In order to live this fulfilled life, you need to get these pillars going. These pillars are important. When your life is fulfilled, you, you seem to have this certain type of energy. Things do not bother, bother you so much. You do not let things come in your way. You do not see them as obstacles. You see them as mere challenges that you know for sure you can overcome. Why? because you're working with the five pillars of prosperity as your guide. These five pillars will help you see how you can live a fulfilled life. Now, my mission is to make sure that everyone I meet and I encounter on this journey called life, I encourage them, inspire them, enhance them, um, empower them, accelerate them, educate them, enlighten them, encourage them to live a fulfilled life. So therefore, my mission is to make sure you get this. Now, I know for sure that I do not have all the answers to these questions and to all your questions about how to do this. But what I know for sure, I am enabled to help you to meet a lot of these questions, to answer a lot of these questions and to answer them in such a powerful way that you will live, you will have that amazing and wonderful life. So tonight, being Tuesday night, our, our big thing tonight is the pillar of physical prosperity. This entire week, Monday to Friday, is the five pillars of prosperity and the family. And tonight, we are doing the five pillars of prosperity. We are choosing physical. Tuesday night is always physical prosperity. This time, physical prosperity and the family. Not physical prosperity and you. That was all of last week. And you can check it out. Tonight, though, is physical prosperity and the family. How do we put physical prosperity and the family together? What do we do with that? How do we get that going? And this is where I come in. Physical prosperity is not only the thing that you see you must lose weight and you have to do this. Physical prosperity, it has to do with nutrition and health and the family unit once it becomes a family unit there are little people in there before that it's a couple i am a couple and i have this person with me and we're married and then all of a sudden boom bam this human being that is maybe not even 27 inches long is running the entire household Sometimes they're running the entire extended family, grandmothers and grandfathers and on both sides. So we have to teach them and enable them to get the information so they too can live a fulfilled life. When we come across someone who is not living a fulfilled life as an adult, especially a physical fulfilled life, all of them, but tonight is physical night. And you have to remember that that person was once a child and you're trying to say to that person you need to take care of your health as an adult you need to 
eat right, you need to exercise, you need to take care of your skin, you need to hydrate by drinking so much water, you need to watch what you're consuming, how are you taking in certain foods, are you smoking? Physical health is just not only running on the treadmill and exercising. Physical health covers your entire thing from how you take care of your hair. That is not beauty, that is sustaining a healthy head of hair. What you eat contributes to that. So when we as adults have friends and family and significant others that are not taking care of their, of their self, we are beating them about the bush. But I am telling you, that situation has to start from childhood. It must start in the home. This is why I'm saying the five pillars of prosperity and the family. The foods we cook for them so that they know they have to eat better foods. If every time we took them to the fast food stores and bought them food there, what do you think will happen when they are on their own or they become an adult? So the correction at that person, yes, we can. But our job now is to make sure the next generation that's coming out of us, our children, our grandchildren, we're instilling proper physical prosperity in their life. And in order to do that, we need to nurture them. When they say they don't want to eat their beans and stuff like that, we need to have a conversation with children. When we were growing up, I was growing up, when they said, eat your beans, you eat the beans, and that was all to eat. This is not the same world we are in. We will find them saying no. And we need to respect that because if we take away their no now, they'll not have a no as an adult. So we need to say, why? Why are we asking you to eat your vegetables? We need to give them a reason for doing things. We need to speak with them. When we were children, they spoke at us. They spoke to us. We, in some cultures, they weren't even allowed to open their mouth and respond. In my father's household, you could respond. As a matter of fact, you did not respond. You got in trouble for not responding. So it's, it's there. But now I am an adult. We are adults, and if we weren't taught to eat right, to exercise, to, to move and play sports, to have showers, to bathe, that is physical prosperity, to clean yourself, to wear clean clothes, to make sure you're not wearing clothes that stain. Physical prosperity, how you look is your appearance. Are you drinking the water your body is yearning for? By the time we say we are thirsty, we are already dehydrated. I naturally drink 16 cups of water a day. I thrive on water. Because as you tell, I'm always speaking. So I need more water than most people, but I drink over 16 cups of water a day. But the first thing I do before I, while I'm exercising is that I'm drinking water during that process of doing my morning exercise. I exercise twice a day. I've had for years and years and years. But the physical, it's not just the appearance. It's the feel-good situation. How are you feeling? What are you feeling? So we need to bring it into the family nowadays and train the young ones to recognize when their body is speaking to them. When the body is saying to you, listen, you, you need to drink water. Listen, I, you need to have sufficient sleep. Listen, your body is no longer able to digest this particular food. We need to teach them from an early age. When they say, Mom, I have a stomach ache, find out why they have a stomach ache. What did you eat? What did you eat to fast? Did you eat something that wasn't really nice? Was it, did you like it? Well, question that. Physical prosperity is finding out what is going on and teaching these young children that are one day going to be adults so that they can change the thing that's happening now. Each one of us has a friend we know that needs proper physical prosperity. We all do. We have that friend or that family member that needs to take care of their health. I'm not only talking of being overweight. I am talking about that person that maybe is not overweight, but maybe has pains in their knees, their joints, their elbows, their fingers. What are they doing? 
Are they respecting their body? Did they know they should care for their body? But, and what are they eating? The food, the digestion is one of the big things. What are you putting in that mouth? Are we still bringing home bags and bags of pre-processed food? My son told me, Mom, when you go to buy something that's processed, if you know granny couldn't, um, wouldn't know what that ingredient is, do not buy it. And then he said to me, if you know a grade five student cannot pronounce that word on that package, do not buy it. And these were the things he told me. You don't recognize the ingredient or your mother does not recognize the ingredient. Do not purchase it. That is physical prosperity. Nutrition is important. Physical exercise is important. What you put, how you do it, when you eat it, cook fresh food, eat live food. Try to make sure that they, this is the season for live food. Consume as much tomatoes and carrots and cucumber and just and make them. Add some pepper, a little salt, a pinch of vinegar, some olive oil and have it. Just have that. You want to have some meat, put some meat with it, some fish with it. But it's better to eat this than to go to a fast food restaurant and order something that is covered in butter. You know it is making the, the palate of your mouth feel like, like it needs to be rinsed. You're eating something that's prepared at a fast food place and you're feeling like it has something that is making all your inside of your mouth feel like it's tied. You know something is wrong. And we do that, but if we do not teach those children that we are raising, the grandchildren, the, little, the other children that we are raising, that these things are not good for them, we are going to have a really, really, really hard time, generation upon generation upon generation. The adults today that are not taking care of their health today were the children of yesterday, whose parents of yesterday did not teach them pro proper physical prosperity. Now we are enlightened. Now we know we are what we eat. Now we know we should make sure what we eat, we are proud to see it and show it. So our job is to teach the generation that is coming now, the new formed babies and children that can still be influenced the right way, encouraged to eat properly. Let them have water instead of juice. Let them have more water than more juice. Diluting the juice and putting the keeping water is not the way. There is water is something you have to have. I have a friend who tells me it does not taste good. I said, it's water. Well, I, she said, well, it has no taste. I said again, it's water. You cannot expect water to have taste. It's water. We need to teach these little children to appreciate and proper food, proper eating, proper exercising, proper hygiene. All of that is physical prosperity. Are they taking care of themselves? You don't send a three-year-old to shower themselves. Take them in there. Show them how to do that. Let them understand that cleanliness is next to godliness. That's what they said to us. So the adults we have today that we are constantly having to remind to eat healthy, eat more live food, and, and exercise, drink some water, go for a walk. They were children of yesterday whose parents did not have the information we had. This is why these adults here are in our life and they are taking a lot of our time because when they get sick, we have to go and nurture them. When they consume things they shouldn't consume, all this um, prepared food, all this fast food, all this pop or soda instead of water. I have a friend who tells me she's thirsty and she grabs a bottle of pop and I'm looking and she says, want some? I know. I, don't, I do not drink it. But I don't even, I never even gave it to my children. Give them that clear substance. Give them that liquid. Show them. And the thing about children nowadays, you need to have a conversation and watch my word. You'll be hearing that word all this week. The conversation is with them. 
Gone are the days when our parents talked at us, when our parents talked to us, and we couldn't answer. As I said, we had to answer in our house, otherwise we got a flogging for not answering. But the, the days of saying, eat your dinner or else is gone, we have to explain to them. They need an explanation, different time, different energy in the world. So say why I want you to eat this food. It's for your sustenance. Why I want you to feel good when you eat. It's natural. It's, it's, it's live. It hasn't, it's not dead. Why I want you to drink water instead of soda or pop. Why I want you to brush your teeth. Because you only have this one set. They're not going to come back after this, this, this six and seven year olds has fallen. That is physical prosperity. It is not only exercising, for goodness sake, and, and barely eating. Every, I want muscles. I want to have big muscles. That's what they tell you and tell me. I'm going to the gym because I'm ready. I'll be slimmer than you. Knock yourself out. I exercise twice a day, but it's not because I go to the gym. I use a medicine, a medicine ball during, during the day, but I drink water and I eat foods that will be healthy. Like today for lunch, I went to the garden and I just got Swiss chard, I got some kale, I got some tomatoes, I got some green beans, and I don't know what else I got. And I had two cucumbers that were turning yellow, and you, when they're like this, instead of throwing them out, you cook them. I peel them, I cut them, and I stewed that with onion and garlic, a little curry, some turmeric, and some pepper, cayenne pepper. And I had it with, what is over a, over a potato? A sweet potato, I had it with that. That we can do now. So nowadays, in, until the winter has come and the, and the produce that's coming from somewhere far away, eat fresh. Teach your children to eat fresh. Make the tomato, when you slice it, add a little bit of salt to it. Add a little pepper. Give them taste buds so that their taste buds develop. Some kind doesn't hurt. So these are the things we have to do. Physical prosperity for the family means family. It means everything. Teach them to shampoo their hair, wash your hair. It's all physical. Teach them to use a conditioner. Teach them to make sure they drink the water, they bathe, they wear proper shoes. Teach them. Tell them the disadvantages of wearing shoes that are not proper or too tight on your feet. If you do that as a child, and then the toes are all one on top of the other, before you know it, you're walking like you're 96 years old. The adults that you're looking at today, that are standing here today, and they are having physical ailments of all kinds, they were children too. But at the time, maybe, they did not get the proper physical prosperity guidance. How do you expect them to pass something they never had, they never got to children? So those of us who have the opportunity or oh, to be able to influence children or young people, do that. Serve them by telling them what to, they should eat, what they should drink, when they should do it. Just help them. Let them know that they do not need to go to bed with a full stomach. You won't feel good in the morning. Let them know before they go to bed, they should really relax their body and make sure the digestion is working. We need to do this. Tell them it's stimulating sometimes. I take a cold shower. Just tell them try it. Because when you all who have tried it knows that when you do that, the body, the blood has to move to warm up the body. And that's good for us. Physical prosperity. People think physical prosperity is just looking at the face. No. Somebody commented on my arms. And I said, well, I eat well. What I eat shows up on there. I exercise. I do shadow boxing. I'm not good at it, but I'm moving my arms. And that's what matter. I take my son's medicine ball and I use it as much as I can. And that's what matter. So when you see somebody that has taken care of themselves, instead of saying to them, oh, look at you. Say, you know, you look gorgeous. Any tips for me? 
Don't even tell them what you want the tips on. And let them offer you something. Ask them, how do you eat? I know you're a nutritionist. What would be nice for a 60-year-old 60 woman or 32-year-old person who wants to just be healthy? Ask a question. Do not, the only question that's a stupid question is the one you did not ask. That's the stupid question. So ask a question. How do, you know, I know you do this. You, you, how do you do this? I know you eat right. I know you, you exercise. I know you meditate. I know you do yoga. Okay, can you give me two poses? I do not have time, but I have 10 minutes in the morning. Tell me something I can do. Just ask. They will give it to you. Because we all were born to teach. We were born to teach others what we know. And when they have a glass like this with knowledge in it, and they pour some of it into you, automatically more fresh knowledge comes to them and they have more to share. And you know who got some knowledge can share it with your family. This is where this thing begins. Do not tell me the school should be teaching that too. Every one of the pillars of prosperity, somebody has the audacity to tell me, but tell them every day, should be teaching it in school. Well, what are you teaching at home? That's the question I asked one woman. And she did not have an answer. I asked her how many children you had. She had six. She's complaining about her son and his wife, how they're spending money and they have no money. And she has to constantly be bailing them out. And, but she, she said to me, well, the school should have taught people how to manage money. And I said, really? So where did the school teach you how to exercise and do nutrition? What are we teaching at home? They don't cook at school for you. They're not in charge of feeding each of you individually. What was breakfast today? Was it a fat cake, a vansho cake with cream in it you gave your child this morning? That type of thing doesn't last more than five minutes in the stomach. You know how I know this? When Michael was a little boy, he came home one day, he always had oats. Oats made from coconut milk with cinnamon and nutmeg and sugar. And when it was done, a dab of butter. But he found out his little friends at school were having cereal in boxes. He said to me, Mom, you have to stop making these oats and give me some cereal. I go, whatever. I knew what was going to happen. So when he used to go grocery shopping, because we spent Friday nights together, I was our night, so we went grocery shopping. I said, choose the cereal you want. He got it. Caught his bowl of cereal Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday when he came home, he said, Mom, I don't think I want that cereal anymore. So, you know, I lost it because his money gone down the drain. I said, you mean to tell me? You got me to buy cereal that is so expensive and now you're telling me you don't want it. So can you tell me why? Well, by the time the bus comes at the door to pick me up, I am hungry. I said, oh, oh. He said, no, I can hear gudum gudum in my stomach. I said, oh yeah? He said, yes. He said, I think I have my oats and my cornmeal in, in the morning, the cornmeal porridge and the oats porridge in the morning instead. Because he found out he was not feeling good. So he knew the difference. That's what we have to do. Give them the best. So that all we can do is teach them the best that we can. So the schools will teach geography, history, and math and science. And we will teach self-care, physical prosperity, mental prosperity, emotional prosperity, spiritual prosperity, financial, financial prosperity. The school is not the job. That's the job of the family. So this is what I wanted to bring tonight, that physical prosperity and the family actually begins in the family, not in the school, nowhere else. Show, live by example, feed them what you want to see them eat. Do not feed them the pizza every day. I'm not saying they shouldn't have a treat. Everybody needs an indulgence now and again. But try to cook more real food in the house and let and introduce them to foods. Introduce them to your culture food at an early age so they will like it. They will appreciate it. Their palate will be richer for it. 
But do not just give them the same old hot dog and hamburger and pizza and whatever and whatever. Give them some real food. So send in your light and joy. I hope you enjoy this and, you know, I take off in a time.